Oh, bliss. We are stood in front of the magnificent Three Sisters. There we go. And what I'm going to do is, is head up into the hidden valley and we're going to find a place to pitch a tent up there. And it is just epic here. It's just honestly incredible. I mean, the drive over has just lead you into this, but I mean, just it's just absolutely stunning up there. So I am looking forward to cracking on and getting up and seeing what it's got to offer. I've got the ice axe just in case because there's quite a lot of snow on the tops and uh, some decent crampons as well. So you never can be to too sure. So, oh, sunshine though. Sun is as well there in my pocket. So they'll be going on straight away. Right, let's bash on. What a fantastic day. Honestly, I cannot believe the weather. Just the glorious sunshine just pounding down onto me. And I can really feel it. And just walking up towards the three sisters here. I mean, they are three rough ass sisters, but so beautiful. Completely stunning. Just wow, I'm absolutely blown away by this place. I'll tell you what, Scotland just, it really does do it for me. I love it, absolutely love it. Come on then. Hey blue. Come on, go down. <laughs> Dog, the steps here, go down the stairs. You can choose your own way, mate, whatever you want. <laughs> oh dear, what a dog, eh? Oh, brilliant. What a dog. He's got the choice of stairs, but he chooses the the rough route, the natural route, which uh, I think would have been better for his paws, that's why. So, yep, he's sort of daft, but not so daft at the same time. <laughs> Well, it didn't last long. It's five degrees at the car, so it's pretty chilly, but as I always say, start off with one less layer than you think you need. So within 15 minutes, off it comes. Every time. Well, this is just fantastic. Not the word for it, really. We've got a 30 to 40 meter drop down here, which is quite sheer, into some beautiful waterfalls, and just uh, heading up into the sunshine. You can't really beat this, can you? Wow.
look at this we found a twin of blue <laughs> what a gorgeous dog going fine I'll tell you what, this is just divine. Take a look at this. What a place. It's just like prehistoric. It's it's definitely uh, what it's saying with the being the hidden valley, because you just would not know it's here. And wow, just wow. I'm just excited. I was planning on sort of moving up to the sort of higher areas to camp, but I don't know now. It's that sort of tranquil that it just might be a really nice place just to pitch up and just relax. <laughs> just wow. I mean, look, all the snow up there in the background, the sun just beaming down and it's just almost silent. <laughs> oh dear, I feel like a very lucky man, eh? A lucky man. I get the chance to do this. I make the choice to come and do this. And that's what it's about. It's one thing being physically able enough to do it, but there's a lot of people who are physically able and still choose to stay at home, so... I can't promote it anymore. Get yourselves outside, guys. <laughs> Just get outside and take all this in, eh? Well, this is just the perfect place for pitching a tent. There's so many places, it's just perfectly flat. All in this basin here, you can just sort of see everywhere, all the way around. So yeah, it, it's definitely a place I could come back to. But, I've had a couple of hours of the day left, and I just sort of feel that I want to set off and try see what's up this mountain, and maybe get to the snow and just see what it's like. 
I've got an ice axe and I've got my crampons so you never know we'll see how far we get but I mean up there it's pretty uh pretty snowy like but I think uh, what happens is you basically skirt around the outside of this anyway so I don't really know how far I need to go if I need to get into the snow line but anyway <laughs> it's all excited isn't it ah <sighs> What a place though! Yes, just amazing, just amazing. Well I am tramming on up out of the end of the valley, if you just look back here you can just see that flat bed there which is my safety net. So if I continue up here, get to the snow line and I struggle to find anywhere to pitch a tent or it's too dangerous to continue I'll just come back down, pitch a tent there and have a nice relaxed one <sighs> But, I mean, coming up here you can see I've got these sort of gullies and I was just chatting to one of the guys on the way down and he said that he tried to make it up the sort of main pathway which is during the summer it's just a steep path but now it's covered in snow but he didn't have crampons and he didn't have an ice axe so i might go have a look at that and just sort of see if there is a possibility of making it up onto that ridge line you never know if not though we'll pick an easier route Well, I don't know if you can see, but that gully up there, someone has just fallen from the top of that gully and has stopped about three quarters of the way down it. And they're moving fast. I'm just listening out and see if there's a, any noise or any distress signal there. Don't look like they're moving to be honest. There is someone on top which must be his mate I guess but hell that was a long bloody fall. There's going to be a good couple hundred metres there. I'm just going to call through and just see if I get an answer. Jeez. Well, I just shouted over and I did get a hand signal, but <laughs> he was really falling, like proper rolling, arms and legs all over. So there's a good chance he's hurt himself. Anyway, there's two other people here, so I'm just going to head over and then just make sure he's all right and doesn't need any sort of support to get back down again frig me that was a hell of a fall though and he was proper just arms and legs doing cartwheels everywhere all right let's get over there eh he's at the bottom of the gully right, okay. just found these two skiers here so i'm just going to head up and just see if this guy's all right But it's going to be a tricky one underfoot. Currently on snow. God, I hope he's all right. I cannot leave him without checking, though. No chance whatsoever. Dig in, Al. Dig in. Come on. Well, crampons on, high tax out. And if you can see up there, two people now. One guy's walked his way down to the other one. He's moved and he shouted and said everything's okay, but he hasn't stood up. And I just feel I need to just go check in and see what's going on. 
at least I've got some kit just to at least keep him warm if needed. Oh, God, that was just unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, I need to make my way up through all this now. Let's have a look. Oh, God. Come on, come on, come on. Rescue dog. Well, nearly to the guy. He's up. Looks like he might be limping slightly, but at least he hasn't broken anything. Oh dear. Here he is. What a hellish fall, mate. Are you okay? Well, he's all right, he's a fella. He's just busted his ankle. And I'm just gonna sort of lead him down now just to make sure that he's safe while his mate's gone back up just to gather a couple of items that have fallen out of his hands, like his ice axe. He lost his ice axe on the way down. Um, <laughs> so. I've given him mine just to give him a bit of extra support with his ankle and uh, I'm just going to make our way back down the valley and then I'll just camp out down there somewhere I reckon. Oh, what a day! What a day! Well, there we go, an eventful day. So basically what's happened is two guys just out with the right kit, they had crampons, you know, ice axe and everything like that, but one more experienced than the other. And they were just basically trying to sort of slide down the gully just slowly, um, you know, do a little bit of time, just stop and keep sort of doing that. Lost control, slid the whole length of that gully. And I mean, that's like, God, there's 150, 200 meters fall there. And um, from a distance watching that, you know, he was sliding for a while. He was self-arresting, um, couldn't slow himself down. He then lost his ice ax halfway down start because he started doing tumbles. So he was doing like proper ass over tit, you know, handstand into handsprings all the way down. Um, came to a standstill. He's bust his ankle, not broken it, but because he's still sort of moving, but a very lucky guy, very lucky. And it just sort of shows you, you know, up in these places, I said to him, one stage further there and you've broken your leg and then you're in a serious, serious uh, predicament there. Just because, you know, it's five o'clock now, another couple of hours, it's gonna get dark and you'll be stuck on a mountain and not being able to get off. So uh, yeah, he feels very lucky, I know he does. And um, I, I'm just sort of glad that he's all right and what a top guy you know like really really top guy you know he's bashed his face a little bit a bit of sort of ice burn and things like that um but yeah it just shows you <laughs> it's not a place to mess about it really is not oh dear yeah good lad though anyway i'm gonna head back down and i'm just gonna have a nice peaceful calm one just down on that uh flat section in the valley bottom floor there <sighs> yep, did what I could, eh? I escorted him down um, all the way. I sort of gave him my ice axe as well, so he had just um, a bit more support, just obviously because he was injured. Um, so yeah, made it down and his mate's sort of catching him up now and hopefully I'll get to see him again down there. But <sighs> what a life, eh? <laughs> what a life, oh dear.
This is it then, the place to pitch. Back down in the valley, the hidden valley. Let's get this off your dog, eh? Come on, flip that off. <laughs> there we go, get on then. Oh dear, right, let's get this tent up. Boom, there we go. All set up, just need to get all the kit inside and then I'm gonna make a bacon butty. I have got some bacon, I mean, get that. Bacon butty on a mountain. Problem is, I don't have any brown sauce or mayo and that is what makes a bacon butty. So I will just have to make do with the taste of the bacon. Hey Blue, you can have some too, eh? <laughs> get off me, go on then. Oh dear. What a chair, eh? It's done me well as this chair. You cannot beat this for comfort. <sighs> so before I put all the gubbins into the tent, I thought I'd just sort of show you around first. So basically each end has a vent, which uh, has this hood over the top, which is kind of good because it just uh, throws all the rain off so nothing can sort of get in. Got the one pole at each side and then plenty of peg points all the way around so with all those peg points it's fairly solid because one end's got loads and the other end's got loads and you've just got the two either side one on the guy and then one on the actual um tent itself just holding the bottom together there and as you can see some of these pegs are not in very well because we're on like a, a riverbed a dry riverbed so it's just stone under here so Anyway, it's not gonna be windy, so I'm not too worried. But yes, it looks kind of sweet, this tent. I do like it. Anyway, inside, I'll just uh, show you. So, it's not a bad space. This width is fairly wide, but I don't think you'd get two people in it, even though they sort of say it is for two. If you can see, we've got the vent at that end. And then that just uh, has this little section here to take off, a bit of Velcro, just so you've got plenty of airflow from inside to out there. I've actually not pinned this down here, which uh, you can do, but I don't think it needs it. And then it's exactly the same at the other end. And porch wise, I've got to say, you haven't got that much space here, enough to just cook. But I guess you can pull this back, not a problem. Um, you know, while you're sat in here, especially if there's just one person in it, but yes, not bad at all, really. It's got um, little magnets in here as well, which is kind of good because when you uh, put the door, zip the door to, then obviously these magnets just sort of hold the uh, uh, storm flap down. So it stops any water sort of penetrating the zip. So yes, overall it works pretty well. So, let's get in it properly then, eh? What do you say, Blue? So, here we go. Let's get my cooking set out. I've not mentioned this for a while. This is the GSI Soloist, I think. But I honestly swear by it. Comes with a lid. Let me just uh, take all the stuff out. And We've got a very solid pot, which is very much non-stick. There is a guard for keeping the wind off, and that just sits on top of the stove. And that's to support that. Nice and simple. I cut this to fit inside just so I've got a chopping board, just in case I need one. And then this actual section, which is the bag to hold it all together, is 
fully sealed and you can use it for carrying water. So a great little washing up bowl. And then I think it comes with, I can't remember because I've got two sets here. Anyway, I've got this cup here, which this one sits perfectly inside. And then that fits perfectly inside that one. And then inside this mug, which is a separate thing to buy. So it comes with a uh, drinkable lid. I put inside a lighter, the stove itself, the pot grips, which are just brilliant. And um, because obviously this gets hot, so you can just pick it up with that. And then, there you go, fits the gas in as well. I just put a little washing up thing in the bottom to stop the gas banging about. So yeah, once you get it set up, you can cook in the main pan. And then I use this one just for water and making my tea. So. If I just take that out of its neoprene pouch, so that's just a little pouch that it goes in just so you can hold it because this obviously will be too hot. So that goes straight in the stove, water in, make your tea, use your pot grips, pick it up, drop it into there, tea's made, bang your lid on, nice cup of tea that stays warm for a long time. And that's what I like when I'm out here because then you know you can sort of sit and chill and sip it for a while and just uh, take all this in. So yeah, good setup is that. It is the Pinnacle Soloist by GSI. And that one is a different one to add to it, but anyway, there you go. Let's get some bacon butties on. So now fancy here, pot on. The bacon is gonna have to <laughs> Get cooked in here. It shouldn't take long though. Be a few bits at a time. So normally I'd bring a titanium plate because it's lightweight and it sits on the top of my bag just nicely in the hood of it. But I forgot it and that's what I'd normally do the bacon on but Anyway, we'll bang it in there and it all tastes the same anyway, you just don't get the crispiness. So there we go, bacon butty, first one of three, and I've got a couple of um, peppers to eat as well, so can't beat this for a view though, can you really? Absolutely awesome. Bye, this is the life, eh? There's not a soul here, just me. Just me. And a cup of tea. And a chocolate bar. Yeah, living the dream. This is actually living the dream for that short moment. Might only be for one night, but this is my dream, I tell you. And you can just see up on the mountain top there just that last little glimmer of sunshine that's just uh, touching that snow living the dream cheers well i'm just taking in the last glimmer of light you just see the white up there still of those mountains But it is time now to get back in that tent because it is really cold out here. It's definitely down to freezing now. But it's just nice just to take as much of this in while you can. Keep those eyes open and yeah, just take it all in, eh? Anyway. I'm gonna get back in that tent and get myself warm, make sure the dog's happy. We've both been fed well. The dog got all the uh, bacon fat mixed in with its dinner, so he was very happy. 
and I was uh, trying to feed a rook earlier which was just the cheekiest little thing coming up and just trying to take a bit of food from me so I just sort of fed it a bit anyway yes what a day eh? I mean you know that could have been tragic it really could you know I felt that I was on the other side of the mountain pretty much and when I saw this guy tumbling down that gully I just thought I have to get over to him so yeah there was no way there's nothing in me that would have just carried on my day as if nothing had happened I had to get over and just uh, make sure that guy was all right and even though he gave a wave across the valley because I did shout um it doesn't mean to say that he's still in a good uh, place or condition to get himself off the mountain and even with a friend there it's not enough you need like a few of you to at least uh, attempt to sort of get somebody down and safely back to the car or you know down to the local town or whatever but anyway he was okay he really was i uh, helped him down uh, off the snowy area um, just to make sure that he was safe and then um, I think his friend caught him up and then they came back past me where I pitched my tent uh, which was good because then I knew that they were both uh, safe and sound so anyway yeah we've got to look after each other don't we we really do it's a short life and we just need to make sure that we um, yeah just enjoy it as much as possible take risks definitely but try control them as much as you can ah anyway i'm gonna get in this tent and lay this lug it has been a pleasure and i can't wait to wake up tomorrow and hopefully have a fantastic day just like i've had today so anyway we'll see you in the morning hours well I just slept solidly for nine hours probably about nine and a quarter hours actually <laughs> just so comfortable and there's just not a breath of wind so just no flapping at all of the tent so yes very very comfortable night I'm just waking up in this tent actually none whatsoever condensation and to say the last time I used this tent uh, there was actually quite a lot of condensation inside so it definitely shows you it's just to do with the weather and the temperature outside yeah quite happy and content really I don't sort of want to get out of my sleeping bag but it's a cloudy day, there's no sunrise and I need to sort of get myself up really and then uh, find myself the next location. I think tonight and what I'm going to do is actually stay in a bed and breakfast and just relax, probably go out for dinner, you know, treat myself. <sighs> yeah. What a lovely morning though, just so calm and peaceful. Hmm, I might just have another five.
blue, blue, blue dog. Hey, get some of this for you. Well, that was probably the calmest night I think I've ever had and the driest like just no condensation whatsoever with the tent everything's completely dry currently so I think it is time to pack it away because this sky looks very grey and I don't want to risk it raining and then ruining the tent by getting it all wet so let's get packed up eh? Well, there we go, same game as usual, leave no trace. We are in this beautiful hidden valley, so let's just keep it hidden and don't have any trace of human activity barring our footprints, that's it. And if I just show you quickly, this is not what you should be doing. So if we just look down there, we've got a, a fire. 10 yards later, another place of a fire. And then look at this. Another seven yards, another fire. I mean, really, if you're gonna come up here, you know, you can hide a fire if you have to. If you're gonna light a fire and there's three fires already here, use one of them. Don't start another one. I mean, like, it's just ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. So, you know, these are just scorched marks on the landscape which do not need to be here. So just have a think about that, that's all. I'm preaching to the, uh, already converted though because everyone who watches this sort of a uh, channel you already know the game so it's the people that don't watch that need sort of uh, the education in that but anyway let's get ourselves down this mountain Well, the Hidden Valley has been a pleasure. It really has. So now I'm gonna head off, get to Fort William, and I'm gonna go get myself a proper full English, full Scottish breakfast. Yes, can't wait for that one. Let's get some peppered haggis, one of my favorites. So let's all, uh, tap down there and give it one of them hey one of those big fat thumbs up and if you'd like to contribute towards the channel that would be greatly appreciated you can do that with the link in the description or the pin message at the top of the message list and that can be done by buy me a coffee or you could join the patreon where you'll get something back in return facebook group set up i'll give a few hints and tips we'll do some lives all that sort of game so yes, ah, oh, what a day, hey? Another fantastic day on this beautiful earth that we live on. So get yourselves outside, enjoy all this as much as you can, leave no trace, and we will see you on the next one. Cue music.
back to the stairs. And guess what? The dog does not like it, so I'm gonna just dump my bag and carry him up. Stay there, Blue. Yeah, it's not good on his paws. Right, let's get him, eh? 